deal with every test. Make a way that you might be able to escape. Oh, I, I just believe somebody ought to give God praise. What an awesome anointed ministry. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he'll never. Come on, talk to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he will never put more on you than you can handle. Powerful word right there. However, I may know that God has a, a word from His word. And uh, I'm not ready to hear the word. I want everyone to stand on your feet, everyone. Even those in the balcony, if you will, join with me on your feet. Uh, I appreciate. This is one of my sons in the state of Texas that I am godly proud to be in a relationship with. Uh, they look after me like they're my own biological. I don't care where I go. I was in Los Angeles. Uh, no, not in Los Angeles. Somewhere in, uh, where was it? No, in, in uh, somewhere in the Northern District, preaching for the uh, Northern District Council in California, Northern California District Council. And uh, before I know it, I sat in the office and uh, two of my sons, John Ellis, Titus Stewart came walking in the door, just flew out to California uh, to be with me and to support me. And, 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 and they got upset a little bit because they thought that they were carrying the service too long. And they wanted their bishop to get up and, and, and go home and go back to the hotel. So John is a troublemaker. He, he goes and says, y'all got to get my bishop up. So he can go back and get some rest, and uh, that's the kind of. And then I was in Lovekin. Uh, he drove after his services, drove three hours uh, to Lovekin uh, just to be with his bishop, to make sure his bishop was being properly taken care of. And so I appreciate them and love them. And uh, but I, but it's not just that uh, that I have them here. Uh, it's because of the anointing and, and, and the gift that God has given them to, uh, to minister and to preach the gospel. Because I don't invite people here uh, to preach that just because I like them. Uh, if, they, if they can't help us, uh, then uh, if they stop through and on a Wednesday or whatever, uh, that's fine. But I invite them because I know they have a word from the Lord. And this morning, again, I want you to welcome to this podium uh, this awesome, anointed, gifted man of God, none other than District Elder Pat, uh, I'm going to say Patrick, I'm going to call your brother, District Elder Edgar Usher, all the way from Houston, Texas. Put your hands together and welcome him here. Come on, we can do better than that. Give him a, give him a chosen vessel welcome. Come on, let's give God praise. Say, neighbor, you've never been by yourself. 
tell him God's been with you all the time. Tell him he said he'll never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Father, thank you now. Bless us. Speak to us like only you can. Speak to our hearts in a special way. Bless the hand that I hold now that you will strengthen in a special way. I squeeze peace in that hand. Squeeze it. I squeeze healing, deliverance, joy into that hand even right, right now. And I declare that, declare that no weapon formed against him shall be able to prosper. And I speak it is. So speak to us now, God. Let your word flow with free course with power and anointing in the name of Jesus. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do even now. We loose those hands and clap them because we know it's already done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. As we're getting our Bibles, amen, in our hands, I want to, uh, as always, thank God for our most honorable and reverend pastor of this wonderful church and our diocesan and our presiding i mean our first assistant presiding first assistant presiding bishop of our pentecostal assemblies of the world let's thank god again one more time for the honorable bishop richard e young my dad we thank god as well again for lady arlene young amen we thank god for her Amen. I told Bishop, I told uh, Bishop Ellis on the Friday night, and he stole my words. That's you can't tell everybody stuff before they preach when they preach first. And I told him I was I was coming down too to check on Lady Young, and and he ended up saying the same thing before I, I said it. And but uh, we all love Lady Arlene Young. We love her. We love our Bishop in a special way. And and I'm here. I'm here uh, this morning because. Uh, every year, I've, I've always celebrated this September uh, month uh, with the church, and whether I've preached or, or not, and and I've always been here to support our bishop and his uh, birthday, and was wondering how bishop was going to get around turning uh, 78 around. <laughs> Normally, he could change... <laughs> Uh, all of the, you know, when it was, when it was 75 and 76, and uh, but uh, I don't think he want to change that one around. I think I'm just, I'm just and all, I, I want to stay content with where I am right now, and and I, and I love him so much. I love him so much, and um, I love this church. Hey, Amen. This is a wonderful church for 96 years. The Lord has kept this church, and uh, I'm here. That's a blessing. It's a blessing uh, from God Almighty, and I praise God for that amen now amen i'm, I'm going to preach this this little message that god has given us on today and and um just waving at everybody now waving at everybody i won't get a chance to speak to all the saints amen i i have to leave immediately uh, service is over our district service is going on in houston uh our bay area district and we got to get our uh, we know Houston is coming around and, and Bishop expect our reports and all of that uh, for the council. And so we have our service today at four o'clock with uh, special guest Bishop Joby Brady. Amen. Uh, 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 Cheryl, pa uh, Pastor Cheryl Brady's husband, amen, will be preaching our district service today. And I uh, have to be back for that as well as I'm preaching. I wanted to tell uh, uh, this uh, pastor, uh, I was supposed to preach tonight at 6 o'clock in Houston uh, for a pastor's appreciation. They have asked me for at least five times this year, and uh, I've always couldn't do it because of scheduling and, and uh, different other things and thought this was a good weekend uh, because I didn't know for sure I was going to be here preaching. And uh, 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 Bishop John Ellis, we, we talk, and one thing he say, we just don't tell Bishop no. Amen. We tell the other pastors no, but you can't tell the bishop no, and I wanted to be here. Amen. Somebody say, man, Bishop had you uh, two years, and you've been there at least three times out of the times they've been doing it. Amen. And, 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 and how are you so favored? And I just say, uh, I don't know why Bishop loved me. I don't know why Bishop even cares. I don't know why Bishop keep letting me come to Super September. But oh, but I'm glad. So glad he, he did. And I'm, I'm just grateful for him. 
on today. Wave, wave your hand, Pastor Patrick Jubert. Amen. Raise your hand. Bishop is a, is a good friend of mine. He's in the city of Fort Worth. He pastors here, the, uh, the uh, Fellowship Church of Fort Worth. And um, I've known him for over 30 years. He's come out of Houston. We went to school together uh, there in Houston. Uh, we're in high school. And, and I, I, I just stopped in. his 8 o'clock. I didn't preach. Just stopped in because I wanted to support a uh, friend. Amen. Just, just walked in. And, and he said, man, if you came to me, amen, I'm going to hear you at 11 o'clock. So Pastor Patrick Jubert is here with us on this morning, my friend and my brother, amen, preached this morning at his church. And I was so tempted to get his notes and re-preach his whole message. Uh, and y'all would have never knew, amen. But I'm grateful for him on today. Acts 28, verse 1 through 6. Let, and thank God for Lady Usher, Lady Tequina Usher, I've, I've, uh, my lovely wife of... 16 years amen and i thank god for her in her absence on today acts the 28th chapter the first six verses definitely definitely not my endeavor to be long amen today it don't take long to be strong amen i heard a witness over in the, in the corner over there amen that may be the loudest I heard that section all morning. Amen. They say, when you say this, the preacher won't be long. Amen. You get some strong. Amen. <laughs> this is the first verse. And, and Uncle Junior. Amen. Uh, uh, Deacon Horace. Amen. Uh, uh, I, I have to apologize to him publicly. Publicly because we went, we went bowling yesterday and, and I beat him all three games. All three games all three games uh and i want to publicly apologize to him i felt so bad i paid for the games amen i felt so bad <laughs> he told me he wasn't gonna say amen to me none today the way i beat him and so maybe uh you know god would deal with him in the service as we get along amen i love the young family i love them um and they and when they were escaped are we there 28 verse 1 and when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us everyone because of the present rain, because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fasted on his hand. When the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he had escaped to see, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen a fallen uh, down dead suddenly but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him they changed their minds and said that he was a god taking my thought from that six uh, uh verse how be it they looked when he should have swollen but uh, uh, swollen or fallen down dead suddenly but after uh, they had looked a great while, saw no harm come to him. They changed their minds and said he was a God. I want to talk today from this uh, thought that God has given us. Look at somebody real quick and just say, I'm too anointed to die. Come on, look at somebody else on the other side. And, and that, 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 that looked like they've been through and the devil tried to kill them. Just holler back and say, I'm too anointed to die. You may be seated. Let's get some understanding of the word. There are many of you that have been going through some deep, dark trials. Some of you are in a trial even right now. And the truth is, it's not an everyday trial. Some of you have been experiencing crazy things. Things that don't make no sense at all. And you've been hit in ways you've never been expected to be hit before. 
Can I tell you, chosen, that it is not your imagination. It is exactly what is happening. It's more important that you know that you are a threat to hell. And it's because you got something that a lot of professing Christians don't have. A lot of churches, sad to say, don't have. It's because of the anointing. It is in the text that Paul is being transported by ship to Rome to stand before Caesar for the testimony of his faith. And Paul warns them of calamity ahead, but they did not listen. Now, how many know that this morning, if we be honest to say, we could have avoided a whole lot of hardships in our lives if we had just listened to good advice? Even though they ignored the advice, God was still merciful. And I think even right now, we ought to just tell somebody on either side, you ought to thank God for his mercy. I don't care uh, uh, how good it looks and I don't care how uh, big it is. I don't care how popular it is or, or you better ask the question, where is the anointing? Is the anointing in it? Is are they anoint? And let me say this: I'm not against talent. I'm not against education. I'm not against having the the huge mega churches. But the fact is, when I'm going through what I'm going through, and the devil is trying to kill me, trying to kill my marriage, trying to kill my family, trying to kill the ministry, it's not talent what I need. Uh, uh, it's not my God uh, uh, education uh, and, and all that it's good to have but it's something called the anointing now, now Paul was not just a man but he was a man anointed with the Holy Ghost and power and let me tell anybody that thought about walking away from the anointing you need to stay with the anointing can, can I tell you that your victory your your healing your miracle your deliverance your destiny is with the anointing and, and I want you to understand that it's impossible to overestimate the importance of the power of the anointing on your life your business may not know it but they are blessed to have you there your, your family your church they ought to be blessed that you're there because of the anointing on your life uh, look down your whole row and you ought to just tell your whole row you ought to thank God I'm sitting on this row because nothing can happen y'all don't say nothing uh, nothing can happen to you as long as I'm sitting on this row because of the anointing on my life somebody else row may collapse and co go into calamity but let me tell you if you sit on this row you on the right road because I can speak healing and my God can immediately take place matter of fact this is a good time to do a road check and just command everybody on your row just say I command my whole row to be healed I command my whole row to be delivered I command my whole row to be set free because I got power Ah, Lord help me to preach this thing uh, because of the anointing can I tell you the church right here tonight is only or this morning it's only here because of the anointing that rests in this place lives have been preserved souls have been saved and can I tell the devil his plans has failed again because of the anointing on my life come on clap your hands and give God praise Ah, Lord, I feel like doing it in here. Uh, in, in our text, slow down, Usher. We see the Apostle Paul has just survived a, a shipwreck. Now, uh, the Bible said he is bitten by a snake, a viper. And, and let me say that this is not just an everyday common variety of snake, but this viper is a, a deadly viper. Now this viper is well known uh, chosen on the, this island and, and many times uh, these 
these islanders have seen the horrible deaths that has resulted because of the poison of the this viper now now as soon as they see the viper hanging on paul's hand they my god look at your neighbor and say i hope you're not today i hope you're not today they go to forecasting his death what are you saying brother preacher i want to stop right here and tell you that there are some folk around you that know you've been going through my god they know you have been attacked and right now they're forecasting your death not in here this is a good church uh, uh let me say let me say it right here what i am not scared to say it i got a full tank of gas and i, I know how to get my way back home uh, this may shock some people but there are some people around you that's happy you got bit oh my god they take pleasure in your pain they they want to see you can i preach it they want to see you cry i'm reminded somebody say call a witness i'm reminded of joseph's brothers y'all remember who threw him in a pit my god uh, my god and left him there to die and sat on the side of the pit and had lunch they entertained themselves my god uh, listening to joseph's cries for help now now there are some people uh, and i'm not talking about everybody but there are some people uh, that enjoy you being in pain my god they're glad you got bit there they're saying things like i knew they'll never make it anyway uh, my god they're saying uh, i knew he shouldn't have, she shouldn't have never got married oh uh, my god they glad you got bit are y'all here with me i knew that ministry they probably told this ministry 96 years ago i knew this ministry wouldn't survive but look at you now you're 96 years and you're thriving i knew they probably told you sis you ain't qualified for the job but look at your twenty thousand dollars later y'all ain't saying nothing y'all ain't saying nothing in here i knew they children was gonna be on drugs but look at them right now they say things like oh i'm almost there who do you think you are anyway they should have just stayed there they should have never promoted themselves they should have never my god started that soul winning program you should have never started my god drive through prayer they tell y'all all kind of that stuff that because they want to see you bit but is there anybody glad that God always have a flip side to the story for what the enemy meant for bad God is going mad this is a good time high five your neighbor and said neighbor the enemy meant it for bad he wants you to have a nurse nervous breakdown they want you to sit there and die but is there anybody in here thank God that you survived every lie you survived every attack you survived every you survived every struggle and you can lift up your hand and say I'm still alive oh y'all ain't said it open your mouth and shout I'm still alive and I want to tell somebody that you're getting ready to disappoint some people can I tell you even right now you're getting ready to disappoint somebody because they already has forecasted your death they already got your funeral plans written out they're celebrating your expiration but I'm sorry to disappoint you today uh, because I have not expired yet there's no expiration date on my anointing <sighs> I'll tell somebody look at him real quick and say you look more anointed than you ever been in your life <laughs> and the truth is and I'm almost there Mike and when I get there I'm going to see sharp I'm not saying I'll never be bit again <laughs> I'm not saying I'll never fight any battles. Are y'all here with me still? I'm not saying I'll never cry no tears. I'm not saying that I'll never have sleepless nights again. All I'm here telling the devil is I won again. And every time you keep trying to make me lose, I keep on winning. Smile at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you want to see somebody who keeps 
on winning every time they took a kicking every time they took a beat down look at me because I've been through the storm I've been through the rain but I'm still here and somebody my God almighty need to take about 30 seconds right here and give God some praise that you beat the devil again yes sir I'm talking to somebody even right now y'all sit down y'all make me nervous I got a little more to go my God right now you're in the fire of your life right now sickness has tried to attach itself to you right now death has tried to attach itself to you family problems has tried to attach itself to you sickness my god is trying to pump its poisonous venom right inside of you and it's trying to kill your family it's trying to kill your marriage trying to kill the ministry trying to stop your anointing trying to kill your faith trying to kill your dreams and somebody even right now it looks like come on tell somebody it looks like it looks like it looks like that the devil is winning but tell that neighbor neighbor the devil is a liar he should have told me I wasn't anointed before I won the last 25 battles do I have anybody up in the room that know tried all he could to bite you and kill you but do I have anybody in here today that says through it all I survived the bite and I'm better than when I went into the storm come on in here somebody you've been lied on you've been falsely accused can I go down the road you've been rejected you survived your divorce you survived your foreclosure you watched them take your car to the repo yeah yeah you lost your job friends stabbed in the back you've been sick in your body and they thought you was gonna die but there's three words you ought to text your haters and tell them I'm, I'm still alive is there anybody in here that can raise your hand and tell the devil I'm still I'm still alive I'm still still got held Yeah. <laughs> 
and say, neighbor, can I give you a word that will help you? God is your refuge. And I, he's your strength. A very present help in time of trouble. I'm only here. message the bible says that when the bite attached itself everybody start forecasting and said he was gonna die because this is all they saw but this is what i love and i'm getting ready to ride on home the bible says he shook off he shook off the snake and it went into the fire come on tell you a neighbor come on help the preacher today and tell that neighbor say neighbor whatever is trying to attach itself to you shake it off into the fire shake off shake off depression shake off shake off worry shake off shake off fear shake off shake off doubt shake off shake off problems and tell the devil that no weapon formed against me shall prosper tell the devil I've been tried in the fire but I My last two minutes Tell Tell my last neighbor Find somebody And say neighbor You too anointed To die right now You too anointed To let the enemy Make you lose You too anointed To make the devil Make you give up Tell the devil you to get one neighbor by the we by Sunday. Get one neighbor by the hand and I'm leaving y'all leaving y'all alone. Oh. oh get that neighbor by the hand and get the right neighbor. If that, if that neighbor had to talk to y'all service, don't talk to him now. Get you somebody that look like they got an anointing on their life. And tell that neighbor, say neighbor. Can I just take about 20 seconds to testify a 
of what should have killed me what should have took me out that I survived over and over and over if God brought you through something tell somebody tell two or three people and tell them this is what he done whatever he done tell them come on <laughs>